Hi guys and welcome to another video. Uh, what I had in my mind for quite some time now was to build a PC from the 90s. Of course I wanted this to be made uh, using original uh, parts from the 90s. Uh, graphic cards, uh, sound cards, uh, hard disks and everything. Even the case, uh, the tower case uh, used is from the 90s and so I made it and I wanna uh, show you how I did it and the uh, components uh, what this computer consists of actually and um, this turns to be a great games machine I cannot find any other uh, way to um, make proper use of it nowadays but it's great because we can use original original media original games everything that comes from the uh, 90s um, and so I called it um, the PC from the previous century if you will and so uh, let's uh, go ahead and um, check the components and uh, how this um, has been put together um, in order to build a PC from the previous century indeed um, yeah let's uh, step through it and uh, since the PC is already made um, let's start with the software uh, used the software setup so I have chosen Windows 98 um, because it's a more stable operating system rather than using uh, the Windows 95 all the games loaded so far have their um, uh, shortcuts on the desktop and have been loaded uh, using the original media which means that uh, you might have uh, already somewhere uh, diskettes uh, with 1.44 megabytes or 1.2 uh, megabytes and that is great because you can use those diskettes again and uh, load the uh, original versions uh, of the games onto the machine. Okay, let's move to the hardware now. I found a beige um, ta a mid tower from the 90s, the original one, the, the pure 90s looks and you can see how it is compared to another mid uh, uh, tower from nowadays which is the black one on the right the, the PC that I'm using um, this time around and uh, it looks great because it gets you actually back in time this beige uh, whole thing with the proper base um, free base to um, uh, hold the equipment the CD-ROM it wasn't DVD back then the floppy drive and the other uh, floppy drive underneath so it looks great everything comes with a standard form factor of course universal so you won't have any trouble uh, fitting uh, these old devices into the base um, a good idea is to try with a DOS um, disk uh, before you firmly put everything back together to just to, to check that uh, the drive is working and then you can firmly put it in the case now I pulled it out completely for you to check the disk drive unfortunately all I could find uh, around here in my spares is a 360k uh, Panasonic um, floppy uh, drive I tried to look around the internet for 1.2 megabytes uh, uh, support instead of this one but the prices are sky high they're asking for what uh, 50 pounds or something for a floppy uh, drive from that era um, and from these series from uh, Panasonic to support 1.2 megabytes instead of 360 so I didn't want to spend that m all that money and so I, I'll stick with this one for the time being and see what happens in the future um, again it's not a big deal um, it would be great to have 1.2 megabyte uh, support uh, floppy drive um, but any anyhow I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can do with this one uh, I have many 360k floppy disks from the past full of games and other applications from that era and so I'll see how 
I can transfer all these first on the hard disk and see what I can do. But you know what, for the most part, I'm going to be counting on this guy here, the CD-ROM drive, uh, to transfer files from old CD-ROM games um, onto the hard disk drive. This one is a Hitachi model, back, uh, manufactured back in 1998, in August, and it's a simple CD-ROM uh, drive. Remember, there was no DVD uh, back then, so I think it will do the job just fine. Hitachi is a great manufacturer, after all, everybody knows that. And let's move now to the well-known 1.44 megabytes um, floppy drive, which is going to be selected as drive A, and the other one will be drive uh, B. Uh, this one comes from NEC Corporation, uh, another um, great piece of hardware. If you haven't used yours for converting it to uh, the Amiga 500 uh, mod, then you can put it back in action. Now, the video card I found is a simple v uh, Super VGA uh, Trident um, 1 megabyte PCI uh, card back in 94. It was sold back in 95. Still has all the dust and the dirt on the back side. Um, it can have, it can support an upgrade uh, to 2 megabytes. It's still not clear to me whether this one is the uh, 1 megabyte version, uh, although it has 8 256K chips on the side. And I was looking at the central chip of the card, 94 version 1, dash 1. I know that those cards have been up to Dash 3 version, so I assume this is the oldest one um, ever made, ever produced, but it's good enough for me now. Now I came up with some other leftovers from the past I found in the closet. One of these things is the uh, TV, uh, FM radio and uh, video capture card manufactured back in 99 um, and I'm going to use it uh, although I don't have the drivers for the um, well-known uh, BT878 um, central chip made by Rockwell but um, maybe in the future I can find the right driver and put it through the test. Now <coughs> another interesting finding was this um, 1999 diamond uh, multimedia um, PCI modem and this is important because it really reminds me the days when we didn't have any routers or special equipment at home to get over to the internet this PCI card is based on the connection um, firmware classic uh, modem from 1999 and um, yeah I'm gonna definitely set it up to remind me of the good old days along with a TV card that we used to have before the signals uh, get uh, digital. Alright, you might have seen some things and some specifications that might uh, seem and sound uh, funny to you um, considering <coughs> the uh, specifications that we have today and so this is going to be the funniest of all. Um, an ID drive from Western Digital with 10 gigs of space. An ID drive really from the past. Now this one uh, was manufactured back in 2000. Um, I had it somewhere around here as always I have uh, crap everywhere around the lab so I didn't buy this one uh, but it's good enough for the to fit the purpose and to serve the purpose because all we need is just one gig probably four or less for the operating system which is going to be Windows 98 and um, the rest nine gigs is more than enough to set up uh, many many games a ton of games from that era now moving to the motherboard uh, I managed to find a gigabyte um, with PCI support here is the Sound Blaster 16 I forgot to show this previously um, 
uh, PCI support uh, that I used for the uh, VGA card, uh, the uh, TV card, and the modem card. And everything has been fixed and prepared. I have two bays more to go free. Um, I'm not going to put any anything in there. I'm just saying. And so uh, let's fire it up. And the first thing I wanted to check is the ability to recognize the uh, both uh, floppy drives. So I'm going from B, uh, which works fine, to A. I got a typo here and see the contents of the floppy uh, disk, which is fine. So first um, things first, the uh, machine can recognize both drive A and drive B and uh, we can move along and check the contents so I will run I will try to run a program to see that it can be loaded uh, just about right and um, then I, I, I can start copying games uh, onto the hard drive uh, which actually <laughs> that was the purpose and um, we'll go from there let's see and the old-time classics, uh, the one that I found is the Norton Commander, which has been loaded just fine, I guess. So everything looks good. Um, uh, I can uh, go from drive to drive to C drive, A drive, B drive, and everything, and um, see the contents and load programs, like this application, the Norton Co Commander from 89. Uh, so I guess we're we're good to go and uh, start loading, um, actually copying at this point all the games that I need onto the hard drive, and then I can start playing. All right, I have prepared some uh, fresh coffee here for me, and I have already started with the copying procedure from the original media, from the discs that I have from the past onto the hard drive. Um, I'm gonna create the uh, shortcuts to each and every game afterwards and everything at least for the beginning will be available onto the desktop of course there is another way to do it uh, you can create batch files uh, assigning uh, numbers to each and every game and you can uh, take your pick um, press the the number of the game you want to play and it can be launched but like I said, uh, for me, uh, it's going to be, at least um, for now, it's going to be shortcuts on the desktop. Um, I need to check every game um, by the time it is copied to, s to actually see that it, it can run without problems. For the most part, I need to check uh, the sound settings uh, if every game can be working uh, with the existing uh, Sound Blaster card that is inside the box. But adjusting the sound settings um, for now, uh, it's not uh, my first priority, it can wait. Uh, I have already copied some games, several games, onto the disk. I'm, I'm pressing the first shortcut now and the uh, Microprose Grand Prix uh, Formula 1 is launched you can see that actually we can get better results with better um, video cards that's one thing for sure maybe in the future I'll get my hands on a better um, retro video card um, for now I think it works just fine the speed is right and this is something I wanted to point out here you guys might have already some emulators uh, on your PCs playing retro games um, but this might give you trouble for me it's it was never the same I prefer the original versions the original media that's why I built this PC uh, for gaming um, and it's not only the emulator that might give you trouble it might be also trouble uh, given by the speed of the processor. The modern processors are too fast to hold and to support uh, all the um, 
old-school retro games like this one. So I think I'll stick to my uh, old-fashioned uh, PC from the previous century that I built um, for the time being. Um, I hope you found this interesting. I hope you uh, have um, your own ideas how to make a, a retro PC for gaming on your own. And uh, of course, I have to thank you uh, for watching and please consider subscribing. And I'll be here, I'll be catching you soon with uh, another video, another upgrade, um, another repair or modification in the near future. So thanks again. Bye for now.